How's it going guys, it's Than from Tidal Gardens. Brain corals are one of the few kinds of corals people outside of the hobby may have heard of. They're practically the Nemo of corals in that regard. We know however that there's so many types of brain corals. This video is about tracheophilia. As the title indicates, there are corals commonly referred to as tracheophilia and similar corals referred to as wesophilia. I started this video with the intention of showing the differences between the two and how to tell the difference, but what I found was this. The difference between tracheophilia and wesophilia is, a wesophilia does not exist. In the past, round brains with flat bottoms were classified as closed brains of the genus wesophilia, while figure 8 shaped brains with cone shaped bottoms were classified as open brains of the genus Tracheophilia. Coral taxonomists abandoned this classification around the year 2000, so you won't, for example, find references to Wesophilia in J.E. N. Viren's Corals of the World, though you may still see references in hobbyist literature after 2000. The apparent differences in these corals are what are called morphotypes. Now that we've got the naming out of the way, let's talk about how to care for these corals. Tracheophilia brains are not as picky about light as other corals. They do not require high light, but at the same time they're not really adversely affected by high light once it's acclimated to it. They also maintain their color better than other corals when light changes from one tank to another. As for flow, I would tend towards lower flow areas of the tank because it makes feeding a lot easier. Now there's plenty of debate on whether a coral like this needs to be fed, but we tend to see better color and growth when the corals are fed regularly. By placing the coral in lower flow, it allows food to remain on the coral, thus giving it a better chance of it actually being consumed. If you haven't seen our video yet on Fauna Marin Foods, you can check it out by clicking on the annotation. We're trying the pellet foods now, and so far we do like it. It's a lot less messy than frozen food, so it contributes a lot less to pollution from uneaten foods in the water. Here at Tidal Gardens, we're big on propagation, but unfortunately, there isn't much in the way of propagation for tracheas. They can be cut, but they don't heal particularly well. My guess is, they would take a very long time to regain a desirable shape, even if both halves survive the cutting process. Perhaps in the future, something can be done with sexual reproduction of corals, but right now, it's not something that's widespread. That pretty much does it for tracheophilia. They're a great addition to a tank looking for that splash of color. As you can see from this video, they come in a wide variety of colors and patterns. Some even have insane rainbow coloration. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy reefing.